called the tiny kitchen. Uh, and it obviously doesn't look very tiny. Uh, and that's the, the reason for that is that it's actually 15 years since it, since it began. And when Vince, the owner, first opened this little restaurant, it only had three tables and a very small kitchen. So he called it the tiny kitchen. Now, not once in all the restaurant reviews, I suppose you could call them, that I've done, have I looked at the Spanish heritage, really, of the Philippines. And Vince is part Spanish, and the menu is, as he describes it, Spanish. So we're going to have paella, as they call it here, uh, and uh, a whole lot of other dishes that he's prepared for us, uh, accompanied by some Spanish wines, and it's a meal I'm really looking forward to. Now it's pretty quiet here, but you, you'll notice out the back. And we have a private room. It's one of our salad, umongo salad dish, it's called Carlos. So Chef Jean's been drawing the, the wine. I'll be drinking it. You've got to have a glass of red wine if you're going to eat Spanish food, surely. Beer. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll keep you updated of what he's drawing through the meal. We should have quite a work of art by the end of it. Oh, now we have something hot coming in. And this is what we call sopa rojo. It's called sopa? Red, sopa rojo. Red soup. It's with the it's tomato base. It's purely seafood. And with a very toasted bread. With it. So uh, typically, typically, typically a la pobre style, or peasant style. So the, the bread so absorbs... Oh, the it's not like chunky soup. It's like a like rojo, smoky uh, aroma. Enjoy it. Thank you. Wow. Very, uh, very country type where you really use the bread as a as a filler yeah, yeah you know and absorbs all that flavor you don't have to sop it up yep wow i think i'll i'll put all the bread in there right? and these are these are yeah, these are these are these are river clams they're starting to they're starting to get very rare. With the clams. Yeah, these are river clams. They call them imbao. Wow. These are the river clams. Jay. Yes. White river clams. We call them imbao. Imbao. Mm. The, the Spanish colonized uh, the Philippines for like over around about 360 years. It's a very long time, and I'm just asking Jane, how much of an influence have the Spanish had on what is now Filipino cuisine? Well, there's a there's really a very big influence. We can start with grand celebrations like fiestas, the fiesta where there's an excuse to celebrate. Uh, the saints, the patron saints of the town, are paraded, and. Um, no refrigeration, but you have days, three days of feasting, at least three days. And how is that done? It's done with a method that's very similar to adobo. But uh, the sauteing, sauteing the big chunks of meat, like pork and beef and game, they're, they're all sauteed in garlic, pepper, vinegar, and that's what you call a sampocho. But, but those techniques of preservation of food were around in the Philippines before the Spanish? Some were around and some like adobo, like adobo was probably a term given to the, the to adobo the the, the dish, practice the dish of putting vinegar yeah. or something sour and garlic and pepper which is similar to the adobo of the Spaniards but like the sancocho Sancochado or sancocho, where you have these huge chunks of meat, not refrigerated but cooked for three days of feasting. 
this was very familiar and this was very common in the colonial areas. We have gambas. We have the gambas, chorizo. We made wow. chorizo with fresh gambas. Wow. Okay. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Mediterranean practice of uh, mixing together meat and seafood. Right. Yeah. So this chorizo. Chorizo. Okay. We chili. <laughs> Chorizo is lovely. Yeah, very good. Very good. Oh, the red wine goes with it really well. So the point of this was the two gumbars was to taste the difference between the gumbars that was made with the chorizo and the gumbars that's made without both cooked in the same um, very olive oil paprika. Yeah, the same base. Uh, <clears throat> but the chorizo gives what a fermented sort of yeah. Sort of fermented flavor gives it another dimension. Yeah, right. And it does. This this is from the one without the chorizo, and it's not nearly as flavorsome. I mean, it's it's very nice. Paella Casador, so yeah. Hunter's Paella. Yeah. Hunter's Paella. Uh, so I'm trying the Huntsman's Paella. <clears throat> and sorry, Vince, can you can you repeat that? What what's the meat? So we've got chorizo, we've got chicken, we've got there's no seafood. We've got here yeah. pato, duck, duck, yeah. some chicken, some beef. Yep, and a little pork. And pork. And pork. Wow. Very high in fat. It's more of a colder region in in, uh, in Spain, but but more 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 of a Davao flavor um, type of, of paella. It's more on the sweeter side. It's you know Davao is, is more of a, a everything sweet here. Yeah. Even the girls are very sweet. Here. <laughs> it's the it, it seems to be the uh, the diet. You should try the desserts. It's very very sweet. <laughs> it's the diet. It's the durian. <laughs> oh, 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 this is really lovely. Yeah, all the fats of, of, and, of and uh, soaked up by the rice. And also the there's the there's your um, we call the socarat. There's the socarat. Which is your, right. the, burnt, the burnt part of the other, which is the toasty, the, 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 the distinct, the uh, distinct, the name of big paella is with socarat. Without the socarat, it it's just an paella. Rice. Yeah, it's just a rice. So uh, that's, uh, why, that's why they, they it's, have it's so the, important. It's that's important. why they have the, the, the paella, paella thin, so it will give that crusty. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's, it's, it's not thick, it's thin. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a so it's a little burn. And the best part of that is the uh, burnt part because that's where the, all the flavors melts and becomes it caramelizes into. Came back when I was eating at the, the tiny kitchen and it was a bar and there were a few tables. This is what I always look forward to that that development so this of is that still the tiny kitchen. But yeah. James talking about the old an incarnation many many years ago. Yep. When Vince first started the tiny kitchen. We have one more dish. It's very light, it's very fresh. And um, sided with our um, artisan chibata bread, a focaccia mm -hmm. bread, sorry. This is quite challenging. This is one of the downfalls of students. It's a difficult dish to cook. Uh, it's a, well, um, it's difficult to cook. And this, as you can see, you can see that, that's pristine oil. You see how beautifully that's cooked just to point. Nothing dry, you see the oil, mm -hmm. shiny, and that translates into texture and flavor. Mm. We have our famous Calios. Calios de la Casa. It's our home style Calios, which is stripes.
Oh, this is the tribe? This is okay. the tribe, yes. But more, more on the um, Filipino type of islands. Chunky, collagenically rich. Yep. And we call it the secret to <laughs> the youth. <laughs> the secret to a youthful face. <laughs> I'll try the Kalios, okay, so which is a tribe. Tribe. And. Uh, Vince also has some chorizo in there. More chorizo? Yes. So it's collagen rich. Yeah. And uh, chickpeas. Chickpeas. And a little cow skin or probably cow's, cow's tail. Ox okay. tail. Now let's try the. Moorish spices, sweet Mo Moorish, Moorish, yeah, cinnamon, Moorish as in Arabic, yeah, right. That's all beef, huh? aside from the paprika and the, you got some cinnamon in there. Well, the textures were really nice. For the price, the price just comes from Holland, my place. It's funny because the imported ones are cheaper than the local ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good idea. Thank you. It's because I was so messy. Hopefully the last. This is our famous... Uh, so your wife bakes these, is that right? My, my wife does well, this. Well, let me tell you. This was in the top, listed as the top 50 red desserts in the country. I forgot, it's called Frozen Brass of the Mercedes. And Vince has been coming up with a lot of creative uh, turns, twists and turns to this dish. But this was a winner. You know, this, this is fugue. It's made out of yam. It's sandwiched with uh, custard and meringue. Right. Custard and meringue with ube. And it's frozen. Yeah. It's a cake. Yeah, it's right. a yam cake. Uh, it's a yam uh, ice cream cake. Oh. And, <laughs> and with another lighter type of uh, Filipino cake. Wow. Oh, what is this now? It's called a buku pandan. Oh, okay. It's a mixture of buku pandan, uh, sandwich with um, a very light chiffon cake, topped with uh, young coconut. With young coconut? Wow. It's very light. This, this is light, yeah. So kind of like a pandan sponge sponge cake. Mm -hmm. uh, Marshall? What? Are you gonna have coffee? Um no no thank you. No. My coffee's strong, I'll give you a palpitation. Yeah, I'll, I won't sweat. I'll just have more wine. I'll, 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 I I think I'll have an espresso later. Oh, okay. Thank you. And we need to try that pineapple. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Don't, don't eat too much sweet, sweet stuff because yeah. the, 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 the pineapple is going to get too bland. Alright. Well, I won't eat this until I've had the pineapple. We nearly forget the Kalina. <laughs> now, this yeah, is something that Jane brought. At the end of, uh, at the very end of tasting this pineapple, you realize that there's some coconut, you'll taste the terroir of the bowl. You'll, it's the same pineapple grown in CDO, grown in Mindanao, but you will taste the terroir of, what, what's the pineapple called? It's called the Kalinan pineapple. Kalinan, Kalinan pineapple. All right, the fruit basket of the bowl. But at the very end, at the back of your mouth, once you have tried this, oh yeah, yeah, there is that Coconut yeah. essence. Yeah, and that, that I really get a kick out of that. That's very strange. We export right. that. We export that. Pineapple with a sort of coconut back of the mouth aftertaste. Has it been crossbred or? I don't know. Yeah. But you, you, you try it in other provinces and uh, nope, it doesn't have that flavor. It's 
very sweet. Very. Wow. Find this ube ice cream with the custard and meringue. Flavors all go together very well. <laughs> so Jean was saying that this pineapple has just completed my tropical fruit investigation of uh, Mindanao. <clears throat> but I missed one, didn't I? What did you miss? Um, you were talking about it last night. Rambutan. Maybe that was it. It could have been Rambutan. Yeah. Well, we can get that. Well, there'll definitely be a next time. Mm -hmm. And that next time <clears throat> will be fairly soon. Well, you meet a lot of friends here. That was delicious, Vince. Mm. Delicious. Wow, the whole thing, the whole meal was just wow. beautiful. It was really, really lovely. And I, I haven't actually had a Mediterranean style meal for, for quite a while um, because I've been living in the Philippines. And I really enjoyed it doubly because of that. But it was lovely, the gumbas, that, that was lovely. And the paella was delicious. Thank you so much. This, this only shows that you are just happy one small restaurant in the world. There's so much more to see, there's so much more to try, there's so much more flavors to be tried. And, and not only Tiny Kitchen, all over the world, each, each restaurant has its own flavors, its own style, its own mm. taste. And this, this is just a, 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 a sample of what you would experience. Yeah, well, it does seem to be a little foodie microcosm here in, in Doha. There seems to be a, a heck of a lot going on considering the size of the city. Well, it's the biggest city in the world. Well, in land size. Yeah, in land size. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, been, it's been a fabulous experience and I'll definitely back <clears throat> and definitely be back to the tiny kitchen. Let's get our final update of uh, Chef Jean's work of art. I guess I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>